Welcome in, MJ38 Show, episode number 23, 23, Jordan episode. We already know who that's going for. On the verge of greatness. Keep on pushing. Here we are. Undefeated in the finals. You show up, you conquer. Let's go. Elevate. The waters are warm. The day is going well. Hopefully yours is going well. Your night, whatever, wherever you are, whenever you are. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yes, man. It's a beautiful Sunday here for us in Texas. It's actually like kind of cold. It was like actually kind of chilly this weekend. On my little morning walks, it was nice. In the 60s. I was oh my like, gosh. oh, oh my goodness. I'm a little nippy. <laughs> I should just walk them in like my uh, my sweat shorts. Yeah. And, and flip flops. I'm good to go. But I was like, oh, it's a little chilly outside. It was nice. I felt like fall time. I felt like pumpkin pie. Oh my gosh. I felt like turkey. You finally got to enjoy a taste of it. <laughs> yep. Hit me right in the face. I think it was like, sat- like Saturday morning. It felt like we and were today. never going to get out of summer. Every morning, every night, hot as hell. But it's nice. <clears throat> the days are going well, man. Uh, hopefully your your weather's nice. If it's snowing, go enjoy that. I guess it's... Where where is it snowing right now? Probably like Minnesota. Yeah. I don't know. North Canada. Canada. What? what? New York. Maybe. You're getting snow already? October. October snow. Maybe not. Maybe it's like fall time. They get, they get a whole fall autumn season where it's like orange and yellow everywhere, right? Yeah. 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 That's what they're getting right now. <laughs> That's what's happening for them. Iceland. It's it's probably snowing out <laughs> or there. Or Greenland. Greenland. Damn it. I missed. Is it one of those? Yeah. Isn't yeah, it flipped? You're right. <laughs> First time I remember learning that in elementary school. Yeah. It's yeah. like, wow, that's crazy cool. It's like flipped. <laughs> it's opposite land there. <laughs> yeah. And the moon's out, I think, more than the sun. I don't know. I'm not going to talk on <laughs> stuff. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's getting... Darker earlier for sure. We're gonna, oh no, fall back. We're gonna fall back an hour. I think next month. Bless. Yeah, an extra hour, baby. That's nice. That's nice. Extra nice times. When you spring forward, that's just like fuck oh, you. <laughs> like kicking the teeth. <laughs> just give me an hour of your sleep. Yep. Yep. I know you're working hard. You thought you had to be here at nine. You gotta be here at eight. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're all in. Give me an hour of your sleep. It's like Sorry. that's my precious time. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, it's definitely getting darker earlier. Because, yeah, in the summer, it's those long nights, man. Summer nights. Dude, I love fall. I'm just afraid to ask for it, man. Mm. I'm afraid to be like, can I have fall? Because I know I'm going to get slapped with more summer. It's like, I don't think it's gone yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was it was nice to get a, a little dose of some 60-degree weather <clears> this weekend. <throat> but I'm not, yeah, I'm not banking on it staying that way for, for long. It could very easily be 90 tomorrow, you know, or whatever. I could check. But I, I'm, I'm not even going to. I'm just going to enjoy it right now. Yeah, exactly. That's what you have to do, right? Yeah. Is just enjoy it in the moment. Mm-hmm. What else are you going to do? Yeah, early October vibes. Halloween's right around the corner. Man, Christmas, this whole fourth quarter of the year, you know, that we all experienced together these last three months. Everyone's looking forward to the holidays. Or maybe not looking forward to the holidays, but they're definitely coming. This, this is probably my <laughs> They're fa- right here. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the year, dude. Because, uh-huh. yeah, you break from we'll somewhere to, to round fall. round it out. Uh-huh. Which is nice. And then Thanksgiving's like... I like Thanksgiving, but it's kind of warming me up for like the the Christmas Advent season, which mm, is mm. so fun. It's the best. Then you get to the New Year's Eve. Come on, New Year, and it's gone like that. Whew. What are we gonna be in twenty twenty four? Sheesh! My God, dog! I can't even. <laughs> Time goes by so fast now. Mhm. Mhm. <clears throat> oh man! Hopefully your hopefully your ride's going smoothly. Get in there with the dishes. Get in there with the run, the walk. The picking up the dog shit. Do it all in stride. Take it in stride. Take it on the chin. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> not take it on the chin? Yeah. Not, not when you don't have to. Mm. But yeah, time goes by really fast. We're going to be in 2024 before we know it. Yeah, and all you can do is like stack up a good day. Yeah. Or like try to stack up a good couple hours and then make a good day and make a couple good days and then string together a good week. And then 52 of those are going to go by real quick. That's the thing. Is that, Wait, it's Sunday every. It's like, whoo, Sunday again, whoo, Sunday again. Oh my gosh. Sometimes it's like, I need six to eight weeks to get this thing done. Like, it's just going to take that long because most things are a process. But then you can like kind of like flip that into the perspective of like time's flying by really quick. Like, you just set yourself up in like habits that mm-hmm. are going to play out over that time. So you just like net some result almost just like because time's going by so fast. Yeah, time is a big part of every equation. Yeah big variable i've seen that in cooking for sure like whenever i'm like i'm like preparing like a meal i i realize that it's timing is everything 
in so far as having the completed meal at the end with everything like being hot and like yeah. ready to serve. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you gotta like do that dance perfectly with the timing. Or you're gonna have to like warm stuff up, you know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, I thought about that too. Like last Thanksgiving. That uh-huh. that thing hit. Putting me. Putting together a whole spread of food. Yeah. Cause you have to make sure it's all coming out like at with the same each time. Other. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a dance. It's beautiful. It's cool. It's beautiful, yeah, man. Cooking's dope. I'm happy. We got like a whole new run of shows that just came in and it's like this fall time. It's like Amazing Race just came out, Hell's Kitchen. And there's one more. I think there was a third show that came out too. They were watching. I can't remember. Either way, it's just like nice. We got some new shows to watch. Let's go. That's tight. I love Amazing Race. It's a great show. <laughs> That's my shit. What season is it on? The fuck. Like 35, Damn, I think. Damn, Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> it's 35. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's up there, bro. That's... That's a, a longevity seasons. award, dude. Because mm-hmm. I watched that with my mom when I was a kid. And it was dope. It was awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's super fun to watch. To like, I guess, vicariously, vicariously or vicariously live through these people traveling the world with their significant other, best friend, brother, however that relationship is. It's like they're always a cool little duo. It's a whole bunch of pairs of duos or like 12. I think this season it was 13. 13 pairs of two. And that's traveling around the world, like doing these little challenges and detours. And yeah, I was gonna say, descri- cool. describe amazing race. It's like you're at, you start at a starting line, and you have to get to a finish line, and that's a leg of a bigger race that you're running. But mm-hmm. there's like detours and stuff that can happen to you, or you can like miss your plane, and like you have to get through challenges sometimes. And then whoever gets last normally gets eliminated from that week. Yeah, it's like a weekly thing. Yeah, or I guess it's a weekly show. I'm not sure how it's like actually done. Right. So, but let's say I want to be on it so bad. (laughs) (laughs) I want to get to that. Um, Yeah. So it's just a big long race with like thirteen legs, and be like Mm. thirteen teams, twelve teams, ten teams. So you get it. So then, like to you, what what's so appealing about that show? Why? I it. Do you think everybody that watches it is like viewing it like as if they were going to run that race? Kind of like they'd be. That's part of the fun, right? I think so. Yeah. I, I think everybody who watches it does to a degree. I guess the degree varies from person to person. Yeah. Like a lot of people, yeah, who are, are it'll, it'll mention it like throughout the, it'll introduce kind of each duo and a little bit of background information. And the, um, a good p- portion of them are like, I've, I've been watching the race for X amount of years or I've seen X amount of seasons. I've been watching it for so long. I've always been, a, always wanted to go on the race and things like that. And I think that that's a very, very common. And, but like, I think that everyone watching it, that's part of the allure of the show and part of the, the amusement, the amusement is putting yourself in the position of, someone who has to like pick what challenge because sometimes it presents you challenges and you pick the challenge that you choose it's like a detour like you choose this one or you choose this one you can't you can't do both and sometimes it's like you get to watch like if you're like oh i chose the easy one or it's like oh man we would have chose the hard one and then like to see how you would have played it out in your roles and you get to see how each duo plays it out each challenge and like yeah you just get to get to put yourself in that position i think people like game shows for that reason for sure right that's part of it yeah it's it, like, what would I do in this situation? Yeah, you're kind of playing the game vicariously. Yeah, but, and then there, it's kind of, it's nice because there's no risk. No risk. And you get to watch someone else be right or wrong. And then mm-hmm. when they're right, you can be like, I was right. And when they're wrong, you'd be like, oh, well, I won't. You like get some corrective behavior. It's like, yeah. don't do that like that because I've seen it not work one time. Mm-hmm. It's like more data per less risk. Yeah. But I don't know if everyone who watches Amazing Race wants to go on that show. But I think everybody who watches it definitely puts themselves in that position of the people that they're watching and enjoys it from that lens of like, how would I play this? And yeah. who would my, who would my partner be or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But you want to be in there running that. You I th- want to be in there. I think you might win, dude. <laughs> It'd be dope. Yeah. I was like, I could run it with you. I can run with my mom or Victoria and be like, I'm stacked. We're good. The triple chip, dude. <laughs> what, what duo? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll run it back three times. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, this is your third time uh, in a row on Amazing Race. Double reigning champion. What do you have to say to the people? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Keep going. And let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yes, bro. That's fine. I, I believe- Super fun. And you get to travel. The, I guess the other part of it is that you get to travel the world and then go see all these countries and these different cultures. And some of the detours are specific to the culture. Like it, it'll like um, you'll be like maybe doing a dance that they had to do. So that's something like part of their culture or part of the traditions that they have to do. And you know, the, a lot of the challenges are kind of in, uh, influenced by some of the actual culture things they have to do. Right. So you get to kind of like tour the world, 
and see a dope part of everywhere you're at while mm -hmm. you're doing it that's super appealing that's tight yeah and it's like i guess also because like traveling whenever you travel you get to you could just like i guess like go to like a hotel or just like stay in like a place that's very or not very like a uh, culturally enriched a part of whatever place you go to you could just like travel somewhere but not really experience experience that place you're traveling to you know so whenever you're watching like the amazing race it's like they get to really be in that shit sometimes and it's cool because like, i guess that's like kind of what you want to do when you travel right part of it just to see part of the culture maybe but also maybe you want to experience it yeah part of the customs part of the traditions ideally that's kind of i mean i guess food. some people want to be like a, just an observer of it you know what i'm saying that's not necessarily like all the way in it mm -hmm. just to go see about it but I think if that culture invites you into it, then, like, it would be wrong not to, like, step out of your comfort zone and, like, do it while you were there. Like, be in Rome, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's, that's, to an extent. that's like, the best part of traveling, that's right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, everything, dude. That's it's like, yeah, or you can go somewhere and just, like, stay in a hotel the whole time or whatever. Right. Why be on your you phone. Be on your laptop. It's crazy. No, you... It's like, I, yeah, I went to Greece. It's like, but it's like you're on your phone the whole time or whatever. I, too, would want to, like take part of what's going on there or like definitely want to go eat somewhere if there's a museum check it out it's like what y'all do here yeah i'm trying to understand what life's like how do y'all do this thing if i were here like what would my life look like you know mm -hmm. at least a little bit yeah go check out some history or some shit yeah i definitely like if you ever go to the louvre you know that's gonna be mm -hmm. fucking crazy or if you went to go see like the coliseum it's fucking crazy i think that's gonna be like mind-blowing you know yeah yeah yeah, we're all doing. Our people do that. So many people do that. Like it's it's a kind of like cliche to be like a tourist or do like some tour, tourism tourism What am I trying to say? <laughs> tourist like things. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cliche to want to do that. Yeah, but that comes from somewhere. That that truth comes from something, you know. Yeah, we there's we're in a common experience. Mm -hmm, so there's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's stuff that's like universally we all would want to go see one of the greatest like art achievements of the human race or like of our observable history you know hmm. uh for like um the louvre in paris i'm pretty sure is where it is it's like uh michelangelo's art and it's got like uh mona the, lisa the mona lisa's in there exactly mm. that's a, that, like I, I gotta go see that with my own eyes at some point in my <laughs> life you know what i'm saying it's just because it's right i think everyone probably would feel like that too you know i don't any uh. i don't think anybody would pass up that opportunity just because I, there, there's a sense of longing i think for like to like touch the bases of what would be like a human experience and i think it would be to like see the most wonderful things we have to see you know mm -hmm. yeah i don't think i mean maybe some people don't think about that but if we could get all of the bases covered like if everything was just like good across the board and then we thought about things we want to do like eventually we'd get to wanting to see dope shit you know yeah experience experience some great cool impactful meaningful shit right drink some dope wine <laughs> right so yeah I what think else are we doing eat to live or live to eat yeah here our co co-workers mentioned one of that i was like oh yeah it's like a big if you're in that mode like survival it's like survival versus thrive and like yeah my so maybe maybe not even thrive necessarily but whenever things are just baseline good and you can Try to enjoy life instead of just like trying to catch up or get ahead or always scrambling. It's like when things are baseline good, it's like then we can start to maybe, yeah, enjoy, enjoy some nice, a nice walk. <laughs> enjoy like a nice, slow walk in the park. Beautiful day. Sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's what it's, I did yesterday. It's, it's chilling. <laughs> yeah, right. It's nice weather outside. Yeah. You could just be and exist. Yeah, it's like we're and good. have a day. Fine. Yeah, so, we're all today. Our obligations are all met. The house is clean. Whatever the bills are paid, children are fed. We're fine. We're good. Let's just enjoy the nice weather. It's a, a natural, organic day. Yeah, and then from there, it's like we can. I don't know. That's part of or <laughs> that, that was our culture. <laughs> you know, what I'm I think I was talking to you on the phone about it. I was like, this is like America. <laughs> like, you you fulfill all your obligations for the week, and then you get to just like enjoy enjoy your time. Yeah, crack a cold one or it's part of our, whatever. It's part of our culture. Yeah, there's so many people out there. It was so many people. Really? At the park, yeah. Pretty big park. It was nice, super nice. Flying kites. Flying kites. <laughs> Movie-esque. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great day, man. 
Mm -hmm. Chilling. It's cool because... But if we were in the Philippines or wherever, <laughs> after we're done with our obligations, how do we... What are we doing? That, that's your question <laughs> in the Philippines? Or not, not the, like, just like in traveling in general. Just like, yeah. Whenever you go travel to somewhere, it's like, what do y'all do when y'all are... I'm chilling. I'm on vacation. <laughs> what do y'all do? I don't know. I imagine there's... Like, for me, if I live there... Like, right now, whenever I have just free time of the night, I'll go play basketball at the 24-hour gym. Boom. That's I'll, something. Right. So, I'm, like, hoping to find a soccer field when we're traveling that there's just, like hoopers playing soccer yeah you know right i'm sure and then i should be able to just get an x and like get on the game and then that's like one of my goals when i travel is i want to like jump into a pickup game of whatever they play there if i can and then i want to get bucks yeah <laughs> you feel me <laughs> international bucks <laughs> <Get> some international <laughs> bucks <clears throat> but that's legitimately on my checklist of things and i think that's just a representation of like I would want to see what my life would be like if I lived over there. Kind of like mm -hmm. you're saying, what would my free time look like if I were a person in this in this place? You know, like what are y'all doing when you make it to the weekend? Where's the lake or whatever, or yeah. like the big park that you go to? What do y'all do here? And yeah, I think playing games is a big universal thing. Mm. What games y'all play here, more or less? Yeah, I'm gonna get a buck. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt that at a. Uh, um, I went to like a late night outdoor volleyball place sideliners yeah yeah um but there's like 10 volleyball courts lined up like five and five and there's like a bar and stuff like that and they're open till like two in the morning and there's just a lot of people there just hooping but <laughs> volleyball volleyball uh, yeah and uh they were running like four on four five on five six on six um having a good time music Full games the music's bumping like and i just realized mm. uh it was also weird because it was kind of it was recreational like all these people had just like came he here with their evening instead of going to like a bar or to like a restaurant like they were here the same way that like i'm normally i go to the gym and i see like regulars at the gym who come to play basketball with their night mm -hmm. but this was like this hybrid because people were drinking and having fun but they were still like tr competing like playing competitive volleyball and like going off and stuff hell yeah and i was like this is tight this is tight and it it opened my eyes to like people like to play games because mm -hmm. in my mind like basketball players are kind of this like niche group of people who are still playing now because they have some kind of passion for the game or whatever mm -hmm. but it's not like i saw i saw like 100 people there i don't think that's cap uh, definitely like sideliners yeah playing volleyball yeah we wait, wait, what night was this a sunday night sunday night it's chilling <sighs> i'm trying to think of what like it would be like eight times like ten Plus, yeah, like I would say comfortably 80 people at that sideliners. Um, Let's go. Drinking, playing volleyball, going crazy. People are yelling and stuff. And I was like, this is so cool, bro. People yeah. do like to spend their time in re doing recreational activities. Playing games. The competition. And yeah, whatever whatever game it is. Organized games. Yes. Well, I it's guess. It's not fully organized. It's like a, a middle ground. It's not like referees and shit, right? It's just no. like, yeah. Yeah, we're like organizing this together. Yeah, just a, the same. Any pickup game has like uh, you might have to loose get, rules. <laughs> yeah, general respect. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We might have to get into it over a call we disagree on, but mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, that's the beauty of it. There's yeah. beauty in that. Yeah. <laughs> in the ambiguity, <laughs> <laughs> there is. I yeah. like it. I love it. I always, I always end up giving them the ball, and then I'm like, I like on, I like being on defense. Is what I say in basketball. It's kind of different in volleyball, but like. <laughs> you have to you'll have to have a code is what i'm trying to say for how you deal mm -hmm. with those situations yeah how you deal with that yeah that'd be cool though international bucks i don't know where do you want to go where are some of the places i definitely want to go to like greece and see the coliseum, Ca see the coliseum. yes i want to badly italy have to do that i definitely want to go to france so i can see the louvre and the eiffel tower just touristy stuff you know what i'm saying I want to see all the art that's there. Some European tour shit. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I want to go to Brazil. <clears throat> Seems beautiful over there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like to just follow my nose. And then my nose was like, smelled Brazil. And I was like, I should go there. I think it's going to be tight there. <laughs> Sounds nice. Yeah. Feels right. Feels right. Go play some soccer? Yes. You definitely get to pick up soccer game in Brazil. That's For what, sure. Right? For sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not certain of the amount of bucks that I'll get, but I'm stinky good, bro. I'm sure they play basketball, too. 
sneaky good at soccer. I must, I'll, mm. I'll take all the bucks I can get. Yeah, basketball's out there too. Let's go. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah, I want to, f- uh, you know, that's that's my idea of traveling. Try to find whatever restaurants are dope. It'd be tight to go somewhere and do like the uh, like the Olympics or like the World Cup. That would be fucking badass. To go to, I guess, go see the event of the World Cup or whatever international event you're going trying to, trying to go see. And then also visit the country it's in. Like when it was in uh, Japan or it was in Brazil. Yeah, it was in Rio for the Olympics a couple of Olympics ago. I don't know, bro. It's kind of, that is... The crime rates go up super high. Whatever. Okay, go go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. it's like imagine how many people are gonna be there too. Like I don't a know lot. if these places are built to facilitate. Like you're not gonna get a quiet like, uh, well, if not me and you, but let's say you went with like a girl, like a, like a quiet romantic night, like where you you get a restaurant where there's not a lot of people there and it's just like hidden perfect. That's not gonna happen while the Olympics are there. I think it's going to be like busting. Everything's <laughs> going to be busting. <laughs> Everything is ridiculously packed. Yeah, probably spend a bunch of money and be in lines all day. That's just me, though. I don't know. I could be wrong. It might be dope to be at the Olympics. It might be cool. I can't imagine standing in the stands all day long at this track meet. I yeah, guess if you're watching. I don't know. How, how, would you, how do you play the Olympics? What's the best way to play it? What do you want to see? Like, if you mm-hmm. were there when Usain Bolt was breaking records, mm-hmm. that was probably pretty cool to watch or if you had your like your kids with you and you're like that guy's the fastest guy in the world like legitimately that guy right there you don't just watched it you don't get to see that every day you know yeah yeah i guess i'm not sure how how much better is it to be in the stands and to watch it (laughs) in your your hometown yeah if you built like a nice a nice place to watch tv (laughs) and, and drink nice cocktails and whatever you do yeah yeah like that might be more preferable Mm. I don't, I don't know. know. The World Cup though might be a little diff. Yeah, that that be, shit might be tight. I think that would be an undeniably crazy experience. <laughs> no, that might be stupid. Even if you're a crowd all day long, it's probably still dope. Just, you're probably just jumping all day. Your, your calves are probably playing, yoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because even if your team's not playing, if you're just watching a game and someone does something insane, it's gonna go up. Yeah, crazy like up. Whole, the whole stadium is like so on this game, you know. Yeah. Or these, all these games are like important to a degree, especially when it gets into the later rounds of the World Cup. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should do that, right? That'd be, that'd be fun. Every time the World Cup's over. Maybe World Cup over, over Olympics. Yeah. Right. That's a move. I think I, w- I would put my money there first. Yes. That'd be fun. Because you got to start. Regardless with... of who the, who is playing. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be lit. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. That one is definitely better to be in the stands or like the stand, being at the game for that is definitely an enhanced experience versus watching it at home. Have to agree. That's for one sure. of the only times that's a great argument. I think most of the time people, <laughs> what about like a football game? I almost would rather, definitely mm-hmm. World Cup, yes, football game, like maybe for my favorite team. Favorite team in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll of be there. Of course. <laughs> I'll stand all night for that. I mean, yeah, who yeah, wouldn't, yeah. right? Of course. But like, um, maybe if like the stadium was. Like, going to a Spurs game is not, like, a crazy big thing hard to do. Yeah, it's 20, 30 minutes from virtually wherever you live here in San Antonio. Ticket prices were cheaper before when Benyaman got here, too. Yeah. But it's still a relatively easy thing to do. You get tickets, boom, 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 you're at the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not really like that with an NFL game here. But if it was like that, then maybe it would be a more... Career in Houston? Yeah, like a, like a more like chill thing in my mind to go do all day. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to the game to like halftime, see what's up. I might leave, I might stay. Because it's just like right down the down the way. You yeah, know? yeah. But as of right now, like just a middle of the season NFL game, I would just probably be getting plastered like respectfully one beer after one beer after. I'd like spend all day getting like tailgate drunk. And then I think that would kind of make the experience of standing there during the TV timeouts. And like it's it's going to be a long day. You know what I'm saying? You're there for like four hours just standing in the stands. Your day stands. is gone. Your yeah. day is shot. Shot day. Shot day. It's done. So uh, I would just embrace the NFL football nature at that point. But here's the thing. is, So you're in the crowd and you're mm-hmm. you're getting loosey-goosey because it's that environment, you know? Oh, yeah. Having a good time. But like the, I don't think it would be nearly as hype as like the World Cup would be. That's going to be insane, dude. Like. Uh, going crazy bro i was just watching the david beckham documentary last night they go crazy bro yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes uh, fucking yes 
No, NFL game, I just... Middle of the season, the NFL game, it's not the same. I'm going to watch that on TV, I think. I'll watch four or five of them on TV, I think. <laughs> yeah, I love the red zone. I want to go to a game that with you dope. at some point. Just yeah, to do I've it. Never, I've never, yeah, I've never been to an NFL game. I've been to a couple NBA games. I've been, I've seen Kobe a couple times. That was great here in San Antonio. We didn't even live here at the time, but I've been to a couple NBA games. I think I went to one in Dallas too, actually, with uh, some of my high school buddies. Or I guess even we we're in middle school at the time, but never been to an NFL game. I'm sure it's a little different. Yeah, maybe. Also, if I went, I might be like, "No, that was dope. I mm-hmm. can't wait to go again." I'm gonna like make a trip out of it. Yeah, and and you love the Colts though too. Yeah, I do. Lo- like, I love the Colts for sure. Like, I'd probably enjoy being there. It's just, have you have you ever been to a football game, like a college football game? Uh, I went to a couple at Texas State. Yes, I went to like two. Okay, like, what was your take on the experience? The first time I was a freshman, and I went with some of my freshman buddies, and it was pretty fun. It was all right. We weren't that great of a football team. I I can't, I can't even I don't don't remember the details of the game very well. It was all right though. I would, I'd give it like a B minus, C plus for sure, somewhere in that range. On the experience, yeah. But then I went again the next year with my mom and my grandma. I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> and maybe my sister. Or I, I can't remember. Maybe a sibling or two. But I give that one like a C minus D. <laughs> Why is that? Not not a great experience. It was just like we were. Just surrounded by a whole bunch of drunk motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. That's just yelling fun. obscenities. <laughs> around your yelling mom? Yelling obscenities. Your grandma? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Not, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my peers. That's what tuition goes towards, mom. A whole bunch of college kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Not not the greatest time. I went to an A&M game one time. Not the greatest time. Like, really? Yeah. And... Like, they're cool. It's a cool school. But we were just there. I, I felt like I was there for, like, a really long time. And I wasn't, like, one of the drunk people having fun either. And it was just, like, by the end of it, I was, like, yo, I'm, like, trying to go home. I'm trying to get out of the stadium, bro. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let me out of here, please. And the game wasn't a good game against a good school. So it was, like, not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those SEC atmospheres and environments, though, I would say would be – on the scale of like World Cup dope, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. some of those places go crazy. Yeah, you're gonna see like LSU, Alabama, or something. That thing's gonna go crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. Go There's up. a couple games, I think. Um, Multiple games like that. Like, right, yeah, Oklahoma and Texas this past weekend. I bet that was an insane game to be mm-hmm. at. That's worth spending your whole day. Go ahead and making sure you set aside some calories for some alcohol, because that's gonna be a day. That's a day for real. I'm trying to think, like, when the Gators, Florida Gators play, like, Clemson, I think it's, uh, like, the largest outdoor cocktail party in the United States because, mm-hmm. like, everybody comes out dressed super nice for that game. And also it's just, like, because it's, like, a rivalry and it's, like, a, a whole thing where there's going to be more media attention there, the schools go, like, crazy. They have college game day there. They do the whole thing. Mm. That's going to go nuts. Like, Dude, you remember when Tennessee played Alabama and beat them, and then they took the field goal post out of the ground and carried it into the streets of Tennessee? Really? <laughs> like, dude, like this mob of students carried the field goal post out of the stadium and into the streets. It would just like <laughs> took it down to whatever their square was, and then yeah, just, just like their downtown area and held it down, dude, until until morn. <laughs> oh my god! Then the police came. <laughs> that's that's electric. That's electric. That's mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, that that's crazy. You can't buy that on a shelf. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh not every game is like that. No. Not every game for every event is like that. But yeah, there are some games that are like that. Or some atmospheres, I guess, is what we're trying to allude to here. Yes. Some environments where the it's bigger than the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, much bigger. <laughs> There's like eighty thousand people watching. It's bigger than the forty eight or sixty minutes or however long it is. <clears throat> it's cool. It's awesome. So tight. You love seeing people have poise in that place, like making plays, like expressing their talent in the biggest moments. You're just like, oh, God, this is awesome. All the preparation it took to get there. To get like a – in soccer, it's crazy, bro. I feel like part of – they call it the beautiful game, right? Really? Well, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a – it's a some, – I think some people in America might take offense that they call soccer the beautiful game. But like in football – Man, you could just, like, you get four downs to get a first down. 
and you could just run deep passing routes on all four of those first downs. Any, there's a lot of ways you could just make a touchdown happen. Ask Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> but like in soccer, to make a goal happen, it takes like such fucking precision. This guy's got to kick this this center from the if he's on the wing on the right side of the pitch with the ball, and he's gonna like cross it over everybody to the middle of the field where he's got a guy who's gonna try to header it in, and they gotta like link up on that pass Mm -hmm. and then this guy's got to header it at an angle where it's going to go into the goal and the goalie's not going to stop it it's like and that happens in like three seconds that's a lot different to me than like drawing up the whole pass play you know against Mm -hmm. a set defense much different so different bro it's cool and so i think like the reaction to like the big swing moments in soccer because it's a little more anomalistic on your eye like you know that the odds of that happening are like phenomenally astronomically crazy and these people are like doing it right in front of you it's like i think that's why people go ballistic which is where i'd want to be it's if we're talking about ranking orders it's like mm. college football has some of that world cup definitely has a ton of that anytime someone like that man robin van piercy header yes bro i remember watching that live <laughs> like this is fucking crazy that was wild <laughs> people wait people across the world lost their freaking minds wherever mm-hmm. they were at mm-hmm. i was one of them <laughs> I, was, I was at a pluckers <laughs> i was like this is crazy this is yeah i think that was like the first world cup i started watching I'm like the world cup is lit <laughs> soccer is crazy that's a long time ago lifetimes ago lifetimes many <laughs> moon that guy is dead. robin van piercy Dude, yes. So, yeah, I think I think as far as like ranking order, I think World Cup's got to be number one as far as like event that you got to uh, maybe sporting event or game event you got to attend. Yeah. In my mind, I think it's got to be number one. It's, uh, what is it like? What else to... could be up there? <laughs> the Super Bowl. It depends on what you value though, too. Yeah. Or what you true. care about, like maybe yeah, maybe going and seeing an Olympic swim meet might be just like your fucking very cup true. of tea, dog. <laughs> or going and seeing Olympic track and field, or going and seeing the NBA finals. Might NBA be your finals. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. So some people would have different things, but I think just like kind of, I'm not even that big into soccer per se, but I think just going to the World Cup would be lit. Yeah. I love that high energy, dude, that mm. people are so like passionate and free in those moments and that's tight. Be around that. Mm-hmm. It might get, it might get crazy though. <laughs> I saw some videos on IG of like some crazy international basketball games where they were going nuts in the stands with like... This, it looked to be like fire. Smoke was going off, and it was just crazy rowdy. Going <laughs> stupid. With what looked to be fire. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like me. It was, some shit was on fire. I've heard rumors that international basketball is much more rowdy than basketball here in the United States. Mm. That, like, um, just the gyms are much more, like, hostile environments sometimes. Yeah. I can imagine. The competitive nature of the rival- rivalries of the teams is much more heated, and uh, which is crazy because you think we have pretty competitive rivalries here but like mm. no nah. i heard i've just heard crazy stories of people like killing chickens and wiping the blood on people's buses <laughs> yeah like wow that, that is deep that's international basketball sometimes fuck dude they fucking kill the chicken <laughs> they, they spread its blood on our bus windows i, I think uh, there's there's a story of a mayor, what are we gonna do a mayor shooting a ref this is like uh jeez oh, i think i remember hearing about that too actually right right yeah I can't. I think it's on the Lakers basketball show. I don't know where I heard it from, but yeah, I think I remember hearing something about that as well. I can't quite put my finger on any of the details at all, <laughs> but that idea sounds familiar. So maybe I'm just doing a stereotype right now, but that's the data from which the stereotype came from. Was I've just heard these stories about like uh, it's pretty rowdy international basketball. I can only imagine. So yeah, maybe within some of those <laughs> contest environments, you got to be careful. <laughs> Might get a little rowdy. Bruh, this is just what we're here for. This Come is on. this is us. This is where we're at. This is how competitive we are. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Let's try to have a good time. I'm with you. So it might not be for everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> for me, yes. I'd love to see a Super Bowl where my home team was playing, but like if it was a Super Bowl with like, I don't know, fucking Patriots, 49ers, I wouldn't necessarily be interested in that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but Yeah, hundred percent. NBA Finals, like, so I don't have a favorite team in the Finals, but if it was, like, just a really, really good Finals matchup, uh, I might be interested in that. You could talk me into it. Mm. I want to see LeBron. See the Lakers. Lakers. I, I go watch the Lakers for then, sure. Then who's in the East? Who, is, who are the Lakers playing? And let's say it's definitely going to go seven games. 
Who would I want to see? I would want to see the Bucks with Dame Damn. and Giannis. Damn. And they're trying to take it off of LeBron to get Dame's first chip. Yeah. Damn. That'd be fun. I watched that shit, dog. <laughs> LeBron's going to say no one more time. <laughs> Give me my fuck. What would this be? That would be his fifth? He has four? Is that? I don't know. Or five. That's not a. I don't hear that conversation very often, so I'd imagine four. I think it's otherwise we'd be talking about how he's creeping up on Michael Jordan. Yeah, but let's see, because Michael Jordan got six and Tom Brady got seven. Yeah, Kobe's got five. Five's respectable as fuck. Five, it's a good number. It's a good amount. It's a good amount of chippies. Also, it's like it. It make Kobe makes me respect five because Kobe's Kobe, like. No one was working harder for those motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he got five. So, like, even though Jordan, when Jordan gets six, that, that really says something. I mean, he did have, like, I'm not saying he's better than Kobe. What I'm saying is, like, six is a lot if Kobe undefe- got five. Undefeated in the finals. Damn. Undefeated. So, he's in five finals. for five in those series? No, uh, Jordan, six for six. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, six for six in those series. Mm-hmm. Was it t- Then the next argument would be, that the talent pool was the teams that he played as good as the teams that Kobe played and lost to, perhaps. And his surrounding talent. Exactly. That's the, then. That's this is this is Sports Center, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can we can make we can have that argument for sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying that um, five's enough. Five's enough. Yeah, and it was a hard fought five. Yeah, hard, like seriously, he lost to Boston. They lost. They lost after after Shaq left. Whole thing, dude. Getting one's like impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many amazing players have zero? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to say any names. It's hurtful. Mm-hmm. But like, you, there's players that come to your mind instantly. Hall of Fame players. Yeah, people. Hall of Fame players. I've never won. <laughs> never won one. Say so yeah, five's a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. Cover a whole hand. Four is a good. Four is a good amount. But yeah, yeah LeBron that, has four. Be LeBron just, getting his fifth. I just fact checked this. Confirmed. Yes. Okay, he's got four. Last one in 2020, which was the bubble year, I think. Yep. Lakers, baby. Way to get one. That was his first with the Lakers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that was important. You know, with Miami, Cleveland, and the Lakers. Three. That's pretty solid. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's and pretty he, cool. And he had to beat Steph. It was a young Steph, but he had to beat Golden State to win with the Cavs. And that's kind of... That shit was crazy. That's a good argument for... That chase down block. Yeah. And the chase down in the series. They're down 0-3. Mm-hmm. One, or 3-1. Oh, it was 3-1? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, you're right. Down three one though. Fuck. Gotta win three straight back against the ropes. Against Clay Steph. All the way to that chase down block. Mm-hmm. In Golden State. And Kyrie buried the man to win it all. Yeah, Kyrie did some crazy shit. He had like fifty. He's good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that man can play basketball. He's like really good. I'll tell you what. He's really smart too, I think, from a couple of IG clips of him I've seen. I think he's like really intelligent and like well well put together and was self aware. Yeah. Right. He got busted on for being a flat earther, so like some people would be like, <laughs> "Intelligent my ass," but it just seems like he's really like uh, definitely de- detached or like he's trying to figure it out. He's talking about uh, I've seen the clip of him talking about you can't care so much what other people think about you or what a perception of you is. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you have to detach from that and just like be yourself. And I've seen him saying some real, like, aware things. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then when you watch him play basketball, I'm like, that guy's smart. <laughs> like, he is, I think, I don't know why he's I'm hesitant ridiculous. to say this, but I think he's the best point guard in the NBA. Off the off the dribble, for sure. I he's mean, one of them. Steph might be a better shooter, but Kyrie just, he has every dribble move. He's got crazy handles, and he can get to the bucket, and he, like, has the craziest finishes. Right or left hand, he's got every move you can think of. He's always falling down, but he's always making that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lot of it's a body extension too. Like I'll see his body mechanics where he like flares his left leg, and then he gets to where he's like balanced between his. Well, he's like falling down, but he threw his right leg out, and then he's like balanced for a second, and he shoots it, and then he like falls down, and then it goes in. Mm-hmm. And that's how Kobe do the same thing. Like his weight transfer is like incredible. Yeah, balance, and the way he'll be able agility. to like. Spin, 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 and then he's going to be spinning and fading away, but he, like, waits until he's, like, perfectly, like, centered for a second to shoot that shot, Mm -hmm. and then it's, like, a balanced shot, but they tell kids don't fade away because they can't hit that, like, 
centric point in their body's movement where they're carrying their weight and they're going to like bring this arm around and hit it hit the shot where, where it's still going to be centered when it lets go of your your hand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. your release super difficult to do but i heard jj reddick talking about it with somebody on instagram and he was like yeah that's like what it is like there there's a moment when you're like there's sh- one second where you're perfectly in equilibrium and they shoot right there in that one second yes and you can have a feel for that or touch for that mm-hmm. if you practice like they do you know yeah yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's. I think he's. Yeah, he's great at that. I've seen him do that crazy amounts of times. And that's that's Michael Jordan had that. Kobe mm-hmm. had that. Like the ability to just finish, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just have that natural dancer's grace. They yeah, like, he's nasty. Why didn't they? He was on the maps now. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't make it to the playoffs even last year, right? I don't think so. What the fuck? I really wanted to <laughs> what see. What happened? Luca Kyrie didn't yeah. play out. God knows, man. Who knows what's going on with any of that? All we all we see is this, like the the. The games. The portrayal. Some, sometimes not even the game. We just see the score. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't even watch the games. I see what I see on Instagram. Yeah. We see people, t- see people talking about it. It's like, we don't know what the hell's going on with these people or the players or the coaches or the organization, the day-to-day operations. How, how crazy is it? Like That's like their job. It's like go to work and be like a managing the team or like part of the team or part of the ownership or part of the staff. Dude. <laughs> the ball boys. <laughs> Any part of that machine. It's like that's that's a cool job. Crazy. Hell yeah. My favorite show for a while was that Lakers Dynasty show on HBO. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of about the guy that owns the Lakers. They canceled it, which sucks, bro. Really? Yeah. I don't know what happened. Mm. It was pretty aggressive for sure with its, you know, like portrayal. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> with its rated Rness. Ah. It definitely went hard with uh just being a rated R show pretty much on HBO. Ah. I don't know if that was part of it or what, but mm-hmm. But it was fire, bro. Just because it was about that. That's what I loved about it. It was like, imagine being like, Pat Riley was like an assistant. And then he's like, just an assistant. And he's like, doing a good job. And then he, there's also like a whole bunch of shit going on with management. And the player's not fucking with the coach. And then he's not sure. Like, he needs the coach to get his shit together. But there's a point where he's not fucking with the coach either. Just like being in that, like. And then they go and play games. And when they're winning, like, everything's okay. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. It's just from the outside observer perspective, you're just a someone watching this basketball game but then like there's a such a human aspect to the ownership and to like the actual relationships between everyone involved in the game and the like organization of the games it's all humans we're all just humans doing this shit (laughs) it's like so we kind of like it's like something else right it's like something you've put on tv it's like all run by humans so much people it's crazy it's wild and (laughs) super wild yeah you don't you wouldn't think that like the or it's like, I don't know, like, I guess like betting or trying to figure out what's going on in the NFL. It's like you have to take into account all these variables. And some of the variables are just like not even football related variables sometimes. Maybe it's like p- players that like personal shit or like the coaches in like bad water or like the offensive coordinators in or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or the the human nature of the game is also something you have to take into, take into account. Variables you have to consider, not just the X, Y on this on the X's and O's on the stat sheets. Yeah. It's like relationships here. <laughs> That's so, like so human. It's so human. So human. Everything's predicated on that because you can't do anything alone. Everything's a team thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people d- are so quick to be like, "That guy sucks <laughs> <laughs> at being a tight end or being a being a offensive lineman." It's like super super critical. People aren't, aren't that critical of people are like accountants. <laughs> <laughs> I am sometimes. He's trash. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> drop that man. Drop him. <laughs> from the roster. <laughs> yeah. Just drop him from your roster. He's trash. <sighs> I know. It's different. The same. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh well, there's a job to do. Doing our jobs. Yeah. There's a job to do. Like those athletes are going in there and they're doing their job. Doing it well. Hopefully. Train for a long time. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Don't want to keep it. She. Man. But yeah, I guess. Uh, the hum- I, was, I was just like. Uh, what you, what, what, I was just up? thinking about the human nature because mm-hmm. you really don't. It's hard to just like be your best self. And I feel like having a job when your best self is going on, then you're like doing well at your job. But it's more about maintaining that best self. And, like, that's just, like, a different task than doing your job. Mm. But mm. 
when those things are in sync, then like things are going really well, usually. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, you have your obligations to sustain your life, but also you have your you need to your 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 story, your character. You need to work on that thing. You need to build that boy up. It's a necessity. Yeah, your resiliency, stick to itiveness, adaptability. Why? Why do you need those things? Just in life, whenever the whenever the stove breaks, or whenever the fridge breaks down, or whenever the, the tire gets flat, because <laughs> you're gonna need those things. Yeah, it's like it's crazy. You really need them. Like life's gonna like demand you have them. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, and also your job, whatever your day to day obligations are to get your currency. However you do that, whatever service you provide, product you provide, you need to have th those skills to maintain that business or to do those things well. Ridiculously true. Yeah, my dude. Let's go. We've been grinding that. That's what this show is about. Welcome to the waters. Get in there. That's what we're saying. When I say yeah. get in there, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's the there we were referring to. Because it's hard. Like, for instance, I love I love how subconsciously I pick up trash off of the floor in the gym. Mm. Because it started as, like, me, like, kind of throwing a fit. But, like, okay, so just imagine, like, I'm in the gym and it's, like, I'm, I'm it's 1 a.m. and I'm going, like, really hard. and I just like demolish a set, but then it hurts really bad. And I get up and I'm like, ow. It's kind of sometimes my first response when I get done with like a really heavy lap pull down. Mm. I'm just like that, a lot of words for ouch. Mm. <laughs> and then uh, in that moment of feeling like, damn, that was, oh, ah, I'm feeling fucking, whew, I, I'll just see like a water bottle that someone left on the ground. And I'll, it, and it's almost like, um, because I'm, I'm like, well, I'm here hurting anyways to try to be a better me. Why don't I hurt a little more and pick up this water bottle like a good person would? And then like, but it, it was almost like in a throw in a fit manner. Because I was like, I guess if I'm going to be a good person, let me be a good person. I don't know. But I definitely felt it after like a heavy bench set. And I like walk away from the bench and I see some like shit on the floor. Uh -huh. I'm like, give me that. <sighs> Come on. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> we we're all here. Come on, guys. Sloppy, <laughs> sloppy, all of you. Are, are we not here to fix ourselves? <laughs> it's kind of like I don't know what plays in my head a little bit, or to be the be a better version of ourselves. Mm. We're gonna sit here and, in the pursuit of being a better version of ourselves, be not be like littering. Yeah, I don't know that contradiction. But then now, I'll be like throwing away trash before I realized I picked it. I picked it up, and like that just like doesn't trip me out. It did trip me out a little bit the first time it happened, and I was like, that's tight. Let's go. Because, like, I was trying to get in there. That's one of the reasons that, like, I was okay with that behavior and that modality is because I have, like, a overall axiom, which is, like, be responsible. Like, pick up for what's around you. And, like, because that was a rule, then when I would – I had that as a rule and I'd be, like, in that state of working out where I felt like I was really taking responsibility and I did it, all of that happened enough times where that behavior became, like, a subconscious just positive trait that I have now, mm -hmm. which is, like – uh a, a direct result of getting in there. Get in there. You got to be able to hold up responsibility and like be disciplined. That was like direct discipline training. And yeah, uh, start small. Or it's like it's like some like a small like picking up trash. It's like a somewhat small thing, but it's like such a major, such a part of a major, larger machine, much grander scheme of thing. Yes, like making my bed too. Yeah, my yeah, bed yeah. is. I feel that doing the dishes. Dude, let's go. <laughs> I remember being a young lad, and those were, like, not difficult tasks, but they would go so long not being done. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, like, that momentum. I think, yeah, those are, like, some of the kindling you need to get, like, a fire going within yourself. I think it's kind of necessary. Just, like, start with the little things. Get that ball of momentum rolling. Take up the trash. Do the laundry. It's, like, some small stuff. And, like, take pride in it. Yeah, like, take pride in it. Do it well. Make your bed. Small stuff. And that shit snowballs. Feels great. Going hard. Before you know it, you'll have been doing that. Because, yeah, as, as we mentioned in the very beginning, time will pass. These weeks are passing. So if you, like, just start doing that, like, one week at a time before you know it, it's like, oh, shit. Eight weeks passed. Two months went by. And I did that virtually every day for that entire eight-week span. Because I was getting in there. <laughs> yeah. I, like, lost myself getting in there. <laughs> yeah. And now I have this thing going on. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm still walking my dog, like per, per, virtually every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said that. Yeah. Like, y'all remember when I was talking about that? 
Yeah, dude, I see your IG post. I was like episode most. 15 or something. I don't, even, I don't even remember how many episodes ago that was. Let's go. Yeah, virtually every day. I think we missed like maybe one or two. It was like raining the other day. And then we were like on vacation. I think, yeah, my birthday weekend when we were gone. We were out at, uh, in Austin. But yeah, it's just like uh, get that habit instantiated. It's like, oh man, yeah, all that time passed. That's awesome. Worthwhile habit. Worthwhile way to, to pass the time. Because you're going to develop a habit more or less either way. Like doing a thing. I guess you could have just not done that and then there would have been no habit like built at all. Sometimes you build up a habit of avoiding the responsibility. You get like good at avoiding the responsibility every day. And that's mm. like a whole fucking other thing. You have to like destroy that habit and then like replace it with another one. But it's cool how you just like introduced good behavior and then like is it hard to wake up that early anymore? No, not really. Like at first it's when you w- when you very first started doing it, was it like was there difficulty in that? Mm, maybe a little bit at first. And like in the very beginning, but it was it wasn't it wasn't too hard cuz it was like a, I could see how happy it made him as well, you know. Yeah. So it was easier much easier to like self-motivate to like do it for my dog. <laughs> for the dogs, yo. <laughs> For the dogs, yeah. All the dogs, man. We got there organically. <laughs> yeah, we want to talk about Drake. Drizzy. That, that's another cultural event that just <clears> happened. <throat> we kind of brushed on one earlier, but this is a big one that's, uh, I guess, more more time-wise relevant. Happened a couple... When did it happen? A couple days ago, right? Friday? O- October 6th. Yeah. 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 We're two days out. <laughs> Had a couple times to listen to a couple of the songs. We're going to give you some honest feedback. Facts. Drake reactions <laughs> from Drake Day. <laughs> Live in a mix. MJ38 reacts to Drake. <laughs> how do you, how'd, how'd you feel about it? All the dogs, right? Okay, well, I'm chilling, right? And to be honest with you guys, I didn't know that... Uh, I didn't know that the album was, like, supposed to drop. I thought it was the 22nd, and then I thought it was going to be later in October. But then, what's up? Well, I'm just chilling, and I go through Instagram, or I open Instagram, and it loads, like, the newest stuff. Mm-hmm. And the very first post is just, uh, like, Drake posting. And then it's Adonis... Showing it was like artwork of his picture, and yeah, yeah. like I was just watching yeah. that. I watched that whole post just because I don't really know why. I don't really swipe through all of Drake's posts. Like I don't. I'm a big Drake fan, but I don't really like uh, get excited if I see he's it's his post on Instagram. A lot of times I just like skip that because you know it's an, it's nothing crazy. And mm-hmm. then, but I'm watching that one for whatever reason. And then it gets to 8 a.m. in Charlotte, starts to break down, and I'm just like, oh my goodness gracious <laughs> it's happening this is it like that's the that's the moment i've been waiting for for like two three years since the last time you i get that kind of song where i feel like oh my soul's getting stirred this is it mm-hmm. and then that like shook me but i guess i could have seen from that post that the album was going to drop like the next day or the day after so i was just living in a world where i thought we were still going to wait weeks for it and then when i found out it was coming out at 6 a.m like uh i found out like midnight mm. it was gonna come out six hours from then i was like oh my gosh here it comes super thrilled as gassed as you could be let's go new drizzy new drizzy album yo wifey yo wifey yo wifey <laughs> i was gonna be uh, come on so it comes out it comes out i started from track one of course as you should right okay is that how you listen to an album real quick little sidebar me personally. Me too, right? You put, you put some headphones on or you're listening in the car and you start that shit from the top. Yeah. And then I want to run it through as far as I can get. And then once it gets a little dicey, I start looking for like titles that are going to definitely probably slap. Or features. Yeah, features that are going to slap. But if in a perfect world, I can just sit down and listen to an album from start to finish the day it comes out. But it's like never like that. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was able to listen to Jesus is, Jesus is King. Like when it came out, like the first like three tracks, I was like laying in my bed, just like with my headphones on. I was like, this is badass. <laughs> you have to follow God. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> follow God's amazing. Yeah. That song still blows me out the water every time I listen to it. In a perfect world, that's how, how I would like to listen to an album. Yeah. With some beats on and just in that motherfucker. But yeah, either way, listen to I think I was in the gym when I listened to, started at track one. But you were in your car? Yes, and it was good, but, like, me personally, Drake raps about stuff. A lot of times when he's, like, talking about the the women in his life, it's, like, not always my favorite Drake songs. Sometimes I like it when he's talking about just, like, going crazy hard, like, uh, Sandra's Rose or 
um, sh- champagne poetry, like his triumph in the rap game. Mm-hmm. I'm into a lot of that stuff, but I'm like, okay, like he's rapping about women. Sometimes I'm like, don't really want to get into my feelings, so I start getting want getting to want to skip it. But the beat's tight. Get to the next song, two or three songs in, I'm like, man, like what is happening here? I'm looking for the bangers. Where are the bangers at? And mm-hmm. I just like kind of keep going, and then I'm like, they they're in there. I'm sure they're in there. And then I listen to the J Cole song, and it's like good. Yeah, J Cole feature. First person shooter. This is probably gonna go insane. It's like mm. it's good. It's but pretty good. After I had high expectations for that song. <laughs> yeah. I give it like a s- a seven. Let's give it a seven out of the, I want to give it a six, but I'll give it a seven. Give it a seven. C. For the Drake and Jacob feature, so yeah, so this is not Come on, baby. I should be thrilled. I should be crying in front of you guys. Yeah, we <laughs> talking about how much I love we this be album. Weeping <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's what I thought. We should be rejoicing. But I thought I was gonna give you my review. Like, uh. hmm Yeah, I think I express a similar sentiment of like, man, from, from just from the I heard as I mentioned, started it in the gym, listened to not the whole thing, maybe like five or six songs ish. And I was like, man, this is not it feels as if there's a lot of the same motif and theme is running through a lot of these songs about just like his relationship or his perspective of like uh, relationships and women in general. It's like, ah, oh, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of that. So much of it. It's a lot of it. It's like 80% it, of it. 80, it definitely <laughs> is about, you know, he's just like a, the single guy and none of the women are quite what he's looking for. And he doesn't treat them all super well. You know Drake. Like, I'm trying to explain it. I'm he like, does his best. <laughs> <laughs> it's never enough. <laughs> he, the, the culture that we're in right now makes it tough for a rich single dad to make it happen for himself, I guess. That's what he's portraying and shoving down our throats every track. <laughs> and I'm just like, I think part of it is, like, you got to make music about... uh. What are you gonna make music about when you're like almost forty? Whatever you're going through, for sure. That's a big part of music is like your, your expression of your view of life. Yeah. Whatever you think's happening, your perspective of your interpretation of what you think is happening, or the result you're living in. Maybe you interpret the past and try to maybe not justify it, but like connect the dots. Whether it's in a good light or a bad light, it's like I put in all that work and now I'm here. Or it's like, well, that's a good answer, right? So it's like all oh, all that shit. Went south, and now I'm here. I'm just kind of rap- rapping about that. And he just keeps on rapping about the same the same south. It's like he's just like females, not good. Doing them dirty. <laughs> They're doing them dirty. He's doing them dirty, and then and then it doesn't work out. They do them dirty. He does them dirty. I'm not sure who's doing what dirty. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're getting one side of the story for sure. I definitely heard one of his bars were like, um, I don't judge you for doing that, so why are you judging me for being in the strip club? He's like... <laughs> talking to this woman you know that's from the perspective uh, i mean like that's kind of like hyperbole it doesn't sound like that but it's kind of like that and i was just mm-hmm. like dude these are tough questions i understand a couple tracks of that but it's, to me it seemed as if it was <laughs> a lot so much multiple my favorite songs majority adam and charlotte goes insane mm-hmm. i'm almost classic classic drizzy what's crazy is he could have dropped that as, as a single Mm. And I don't think much else would have changed in my life. <laughs> it's like sucks to say. I like that song "Away from Home." We were talking about that before the pod. Mm. It's nice. Like his writing is good. Sometimes I see the evolution in the writing where he's doing like more clever stuff. He's like putting bars in places that are nuts. Like, um, there's some going around on Instagram where he like references like two or three things. I don't know, bro. Mm. He, he, of course, he's got great artistry and great. Lyrical composition. Yeah. And it's gotten better, too. Like, I appreciate the step forward is what I'm trying to say. I see it. And I like how he kind of was vulnerable on that song, Away From Home. And he's just talking about how he wasn't... There was there was a time in his life where he wasn't popping off. And shit was, like, like breaking his heart a little bit. Like, uh, mm. things, like, weren't going his way. And that sucked. And that's kind of what he's expressing. I remember when that happened and when it was like this and I was doing that and I was doing all this stupid petty shit and all this and that and that and that. And now nobody can relate to what I'm doing because I've gone so far successful that I almost feel like away from home. It's like 
feel like he had this feeling of like, what am I supposed to do? Go back to like before I, f- I figured out how to get it going just so I could not feel alienated. But everything was like not how I wanted it to be over there. So like uh, I, was, I, I was supposed to live that life. Like what? Mm. And then he starts like expressing that like through his own comf- how, how comfortable he is being vulnerable, which is kind of flexing like, yeah, I used to get little bro but he's like flexing that he doesn't anymore because he's like a Grammy winning artist. But he also says like, uh, I got, I got four Grammys, but a hundred nominations. And I'm like, I'm not sure what he's saying when he says that, like he got slept on 96 times. Like when you think about it, I'm not sure. Maybe that's, that's a lot of nominations. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe he's just saying (laughs) I'm in the conversation. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Uh huh. I'm not sure. But anyways, I like that song a lot. It made me think a lot. I thought it was a good artistic artistic expression. And there's some beats I like. Like, Another Late Night, when that beat mm-hmm. comes on, I'm like... Yeah, I need, I need to give it some more time. I need to give some more of the songs another another couple playthroughs. But still, my my first impression, I wasn't I wasn't anywhere near as happy as I was whenever I was listening to the one with 21. Whatever the hell. Her Loss? Her Loss, yeah. Listening to Rich Flex, that first song, I was just like... Boom, 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 that switch boom, up boom. come on now come on now i like privileged privileged rappers oh i love that song yeah <laughs> Dude, there's some great songs on there no bs or on that bs on whatever. that on that bullshit yeah okay. on it okay on it yeah, yeah that's, oh, that's so just nasty good. it's so it's so it's so tight i did not get any of that <laughs> major distribution major distribution that song is great mm-hmm. oh no 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 some crazy song anytime i hear that i'm ready to go up mm-hmm. but I, I need maybe i need to give it some more time we'll, we'll see but not not overly thrilled which is kind of disappointing disappointing that's okay what are your interpretations y'all do you think drake fell Tell off us. we're being <laughs> super courteous we're being very graceful with our our review you could if you wanted to be harsher i'd understand if you like the songs more i guess i'd understand Mm. Yeah, I wonder what the general public is thinking. Do you think this is is it is it an accurate portrayal of what people are going through? What Drake's album? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. I need, I need to maybe listen to it again through <laughs> not that, me through that. <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> he's 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 in it. He's like, I couldn't have treated you better. Go <laughs> into that kind of shit. <laughs> I couldn't have done it. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole intro, right? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Say I could have treated you better, but no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like damn, one of the predicates for the album. And that yeah, that, that motif is maintained through a lot of the songs, I think. I'm just like, I don't know, man. So I'm not sure Maybe. how many people are going through that much of a struggle or that similar of a struggle with relationships or women. I think everyone struggles with the with that opposite sex or trying to find partnership. That's a whole thing. I've mentioned that many times before. That's a whole beast and quest you got to conquer. And he's definitely rapping about that consistently. But I, I don't know. It feels as if it's like the same, stuck in the same loop to a degree. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like, maybe not reading into it, but. My interpretation is maybe miscued. For my interpretation, it's just like he's kind of rapping about the same stuff. So I wondered through the if, same lens, from the same point of view, it feels like. I wondered if, well, another thought came to mind that like this album's kind of soft, and her loss was like super hard, but it was almost too hard. Like you can't really be saying some of that shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like it's just not twenty one. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's definitely I what I that's thought. That's true. That's true. And so I thought maybe this was like. Not a response to that, but, like, when you're going through a breakup, I'm sure there's, like, overly intense feelings where you're, like, well, I'll kill the guy she's sleeping with. It's, like, you wouldn't. But you really feel, like, that much anger, though. Like, that is true. You're trying to, just trying to express that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just, like, uh, then this is supposed to be, like, a more sad place with it. But it – or what? I, I was looking for – what's the last step? The what? Where you get over it. <laughs> the uh, last step? Yeah acceptance acceptance i was looking for like some acceptance in this album but it feels like it's more sad than acceptance it's making me sad mm. <laughs> <laughs> more sad this is making me sad <laughs> in both senses man but 8 a.m in charlotte's like bro yeah i know drake says in sandra rose like they're gonna hear this and say why didn't you give me 10 of these that's mm. literally how i feel about that song because that song is so good 
it's like uh churchill downs but like i think it's that level rapping but just this version of him doing that Mm-hmm. yeah champagne poetry lemon, oh. lemon pepper freestyle oh that type of vibe Dominic <laughs> oh. Moss, poor mm-hmm. for more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe we see some more time to sit with it but yeah i don't think there's a whole bunch of those those songs i think 8 a.m and charlotte's like one of them one of the only and and so this this leads me to my other thought okay and this is where i think what might be going on is like i think he, like Michael Jackson, I think was rapping a lot of rapping, like making a lot of uh, love songs, like late in his career, because it just feels like you kind of that's that's always so relatable. That so imagine like what's Drake is like a brand, so like when people want to listen to Drake, like what emotions are they experiencing? Like what are they going through that's gonna have them go listen to Drake? And I think Mm -hmm. that maybe Drake reads into his demographic and knows that when people are like feeling emotional, but they want to feel hard, but they want to be soft, (laughs) they're going through something where it's like, I think maybe people go to Drake for that thing, which is struggling with the partner sometimes, but like, because we don't want to be vulnerable in this day and age and Drake kind of represents like being hard, but also being like certified lover boy or like from time, like. Drake crying about women's been like a meme for ten years now, <laughs> very long time. Yeah, and I just wonder. It's like take care, right? <laughs> I can't help but wonder if that's just like uh, something that's in his heart and something that like works for his brand. So he just like keeps leaning into it. Like he's not shying away from it. I guess her loss, he kind of shied away from it. But it sounded like someone who's twenty one on a whole album, baby, <laughs> <laughs> and that'll help, right? Get up my street cred. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase that. That'll help your hardness factor if people think you're soft, for sure. Mm -mm. But in my mind, Her Loss always felt like an album that was like an overreaction. Like, I'm pissed off. Mm. 21. 21. (laughs) That beast. Yeah, right. Yeah. You just can't treat and talk to women like... (sighs) Mm, I don't know, man. I loved... I don't know. (laughs) His first couple albums, his first albums for sure... I love those things. I guess I was, everyone's, everyone kind of does that, I guess, with some of their artists. They kind of like to revert back to how they used to be, like, oh, the old fill in the blank artist. Not the same anymore. Everyone progresses and everyone changes. But yeah, I feel like as if he maybe hasn't gotten over, he's like still in that same, it feels like a, a similar, I've heard a lot of these songs before, or the vibe of the sentiment and the vibe of these songs. I'm just like, yeah, I think he's still there. He's like kind of salty towards women. Yeah, but I think also in like in champagne poetry, I remember he mentions like my soulmate somewhere out there just waiting on me, something like that. Something like yeah. that. There's some like that. That's maturity, or there. There's like a positive maybe potential spin on this partnership narrative that you painted. Go. Yeah, <laughs> but then yeah, this whole album is like couldn't treat you better. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do you think he'll ever settle down with somebody? By love? Yeah. I mean, do you think it's possible for him? Does J. Cole have like a, a main a main thing, right? I think so. I, I think so too. He just keeps her out of the news, right? I'm pretty sure. That's why we don't just like. I think know she's about the one her. that he's rapping about in like uh what's that song? Folding clothes. Folding yeah. That, sure, yeah, that one for sure. And uh the song I was thinking about was the uh Hug in the Block. Yeah. Hug in the Block. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <picked> the mic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Sacrifices. There it there is. There we go. I make, make sacrifices. sacrifices. Ooh. 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 Grand. Mm-hmm. That song is amazing. That verse is incredible. <laughs> that verse is incredible. Take a tear from your eye. I heard that verse yesterday, just like on IG sometime, and I was like, oh my God. J. Cole's goaded, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really. He's insane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a main thing. I think Kendrick has a main thing. Big Sean, it's got Janae Aiko. They got a baby coming. I'm sure the baby's on, like, already here now, yeah? I'm sure. Probably right now. Either way. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> So I think yeah, Drake's like not. I'm not. Will will he get there? Was the question I guess. I think it's possible. That was another question I posed. <laughs> Just odds wise, if somebody doesn't, it seems like he might be the one that doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I feel like he probably does. I mean, he's right. Why not? Come on, man. If you're Drake, who do you date? I don't know. That's an interesting question. Oh. So yeah, it's it's a hard, crazy thing to try to conceptualize, especially if he hasn't gotten it by now. 
You know, maybe the likelihood is like decreasing in his mind. It does seem like if you're single as you get older, that like young people just be like young and then they meet each other when they're young and then they just like stay together. I don't know if that's just like perception wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's true. Yeah. Because it's weird to meet somebody. Statistically. Yeah. Like the numbers thin out as you get older from like, because people are settling down. Mm -hmm. Like going off the off the waiver wire. <laughs> <laughs> the waiver wire gets pretty thin, bro. It gets yeah. pretty scarce out there. Right. But then people get out of relationships, like breakups happen and uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh -huh. So that true. people re-enter the waiver wire. Players, <laughs> players get dropped. <laughs> For real. Yes. But then it's it's a weird thing. Like, Will Drake do it though? Yes. You think so? Well, yeah. One thing is that he has so much fucking money, dude. Like, who... He, he's got a lot of options, bro. Like, one thing is that, like, women don't necessarily want to be with, like, a broke person. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think for your average, you know, server who works at a restaurant, like, Drake's got a way higher likelihood of finding someone who would want to marry him that's, like, a desirable partner because he's wealthy. If that makes sense? Like, super wealthy. But yeah. He, yeah, but I think at the same time it might limit him being that famous. How many people like would want that lifestyle? Or could like be be okay with that lifestyle? Referencing back to watching the David Beckham documentary, like his spouse is uh, a Spice Girl, right? Yeah, Posh Spice. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember her name, Katie Beckham, I think is her name. I don't know. I'm not sure. The, all the ladies in the chat Apologies. are gonna bury me. Apologies. She's super famous. Okay. I'm just <laughs> apologies. Yeah, massive apologies. But anyways, she was like an international superstar herself. And then they mm. like didn't have to, they just had to handle it together. And it was like times 2.5 when they got together. But like, it, it's different if Drake's in a relationship and he doesn't date a famous person. Because like, um, then she's having to deal with the famous life. But his partner, David Beckham's partner, mm -hmm. it, she already had that burden. Yeah, so, so she was already... Outside of the equation in that sense. Uh -huh. So I guess he could find someone like that. Maybe he has to. Right. At this point. Do you, do you, I think he's got to have already have gone down that rabbit hole in his own head. I'm sure. Right? I'm sure. She doesn't even have to be as famous as me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever song that is. But when it doesn't Search work, when it doesn't work out, you can... Part of the clout game is like, Kanye West looks kind of dumb. Losing Kim K publicly. Hmm. And now he's going through like a whole thing about it. Like, you know, his latest single was talking about being drunk on Patron, like sending her with text messages and stuff like that. Like, it's tough, man. And I don't think Drake, Drake kind of prides himself in being like having the upper hand in those relationships by being like hard and the money spender and the bucket getter. He's like, yeah. And that athlete you was hanging out with, I watched his game last week and he didn't score a touchdown. That was just. <laughs> what was that? It was uh, on one of the Drake songs on the album. Oh, what's he say? He's like, you were hanging with the athlete last week. Uh, I, or I watched his game, and, and he ain't even score. And I was just like, in my mind, I was like, oh, you can, I guess if you're like comparing yourself to an athlete, and then like that athlete doesn't even like score touchdowns for the team he plays for, you're kind of like, that man ain't shit. <laughs> even though he's like in the NFL and in the league and like gets paid a lot of money. And Drake's kind of like, I win Grammys. Like, if you're going to compare me, he's at least got to be scoring the touchdowns for his team. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be him in his league. <laughs> right. I'm him in my league. Come on. He's, like, not even competing in my bracket. He just plays ball. Yeah. And, like, that kind of fucked my head up that he's thinking about shit like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I think part of the reason that – or the fact that he does want to hold the upper hand and, like, say things like that, and, like, I think that might keep him from getting with a woman that's, like – and eventually his standards will go down or like settle down, you know what I'm saying? Like, wants a partner, right? Who, yeah, he ain't trying to just. just... He wants a partner, why not? Everybody, everybody wants that, right? I think so. I think he does, but I, I don't know. I don't talk to Drake. I don't talk to Drake quite yet. But I think he would want that. Dude, he hangs uh, out in the strip club a lot. Right, I was just going to say that as well. I was going to bring that into conversation or I'll bring that up into, in, into, into mention. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Do you think he really wants to be there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's like artificial partnership. You're, Something. You're paying for like companionship. Like these girls with their ass in your face, or, like stimulate, simulate sex with like a random woman to a degree. Also, like you don't have to be alone. It's like you're hanging out with your boys and then you're like, where are the bitches at? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. 
But I know, I know every guy <laughs> listener has heard that trope typically said. And it's oh like, gosh. I feel like that's the part of the reason that people like Drake go to the strip club like habitually is because you want to be around like sexualized women. But I think that's artificial for like the parts of partnership that you get when you have like a layered, nuanced, romantic relationship with somebody. It's like, um, you're just, you're getting a little bit of that without any of the investment or, I mean, just financial, you're going to throw some money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe he likes being perceived as that guy or like filling that role in the tropotypical kind of cliche, stereotypical nature of a rapper. Maybe he kind of like likes fulfilling that role or feels the need to be seen feel, fulfilling that role. It's like being the one throwing the most money in the club where rappers, in the place where rappers go. These are the games we play. Yeah. Like Pusha T would say. Yeah, it's like, I don't even know, man. Dude, if, well, then, then does he, that's not going to help you get a partner. <laughs> You're just like living for that. Is that, I don't think you, can, some people say Kendrick's a better rapper than Drake and he's not doing any of that. Jake was not doing any of that. I don't think so. I never seen no IG clip of it. <laughs> I wonder if Drake's just like immature. Yeah, God no. See, they right. Like that, that. That's kind of tied into the reasoning behind the question of uh, can, can he, can he do it? Or I'm, I'm sure he he seems pretty good at manifesting life, right? Seems like he's manifesting in the life. Whoa, pretty well. well why can't he manifest that thing? Damn, son. <laughs> I'm asking questions, dude. Because <laughs> I would argue the same. I would argue the same. It's got to be something off on the balance. Yeah, he's, he goes ham. He's a great. He's definitely like winning, I guess, winning the rap game to a degree. Dude, he's one number one record away from tying Michael Jackson's most number one records of all time. And then he's, he's two away from beating him. I think That's he, crazy. Right. It might be one away from beating him, but it's not more than two away from beating him for sure. Mm. Um. That makes him bigger than just... That's legendary shit. Yeah. For real. Wow. But yeah, it's like, come on, man. Come on, man. For all the dogs, man. I thought this album was going to be for the dogs, man. What the hell? You trying to make your dogs cry? You trying to make your dogs cry? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you had me like... This is fall. You know, I'm drinking... This, this reminds me of being like depressed in college. I, I don't know. I was going to paint you a picture, but that's all it is. It just reminds me of a time I was depressed in college is what this album does for me. And that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for some, let's go. Like, let's come into let's a better. Let's some adversity. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Give me some. I mean, ADM and Charlotte's a great perspective on what it's like to just be a sophisticated man taking it all in stride. I feel like that's what that that song really like echoes. Strong, sophisticated male role model handling life. Let's go. And I'm like, give me more of that. What the fuck, dude? The rest of this is like, but the sad reality is, dude. Okay, this is what I'm saying though. How long are we? How deep are we? Because this is, this is great, dude. We're, I, I love that we're we're talking Drake. Because <clears throat> Drake represents something in our culture. I mean, he's for about an hour twenty in. Yeah, we gotta wrap it up soon. Yeah, we got like ten fifteen. Okay. Drake represents something in our culture. What up with Drizzy? He's the most popular musician since Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. His popularity speaks to something. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not exactly sh sure I can speak to what that is with certainty, but how many happy couples? I don't know that many super happy couples. Like, Yeah, that's true. I don't really know. I could probably name 10. But I think I'd be pressed. And then going from 10 to 20 might be hard. Yeah. And, yeah, I, that, and that's just based on your perception as well. <laughs> What's presented to you? Yeah. There there might be a lot of couples on that list that I don't know that they're not super happy. Mm -hmm, some surface tension. Right. Or whatever. Under under the surface tension. There we go. Um. So I think about that a lot because... When we're kids, we kind of have this like, uh, like part of what you're doing in life is like maybe going to college, maybe not, but maybe going to college and maybe getting a job and getting a spouse, you know, for us getting a wife and having kids and giving our parents grandkids and we're going to bring them around for the holidays. And that's kind of like when growing up, that's kind of like what I think life to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So like part of what I like think life to be is like spending my time like 
having a family with somebody more yeah. or less yeah recreating that thing that you grew up in for sure right that thing is in there i don't know i became aware that that was in there and i was kind of like oh wow i do think i did for a long time just think that's what life was and i still kind of think that right mm -hmm. but so with that being said though we don't know that many happy couples mm -hmm. and that's kind of like one of the core key things that we like as a person, I predicated like what I thought life was about growing up and still like do to a degree. Even if you ignore it for a while, it's still there. Like we still think people aspire to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we touched on that in a podcast previous where it's just like that. I think like the society is built on that. Like happy families. Parents raising children, those children growing up and becoming society members. Like even and in keeping like, that going and having an like a I guess ideally an elevating society over time. It's like you you do it well with your kids and then they do it well with their kids and then we just keep that line going. And then we have a better baseline society just for, for people over time. Ideally, that'd be nice. Yeah, I'm just thinking like even like Jerusalem times, like Rome times, uh, early England times. That's how, this is, it's all been the same. Like the f they're doing it for the future and they're trying to like build a better society and like mm -hmm. that's kind of predicated on having a family to have those kids on mm. to a degree. Yeah, it takes two. It takes two to make an make another one or to make it, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. reproduce. So with that being said. Like all life forms. Is there any, I don't think there's like any self-reproducing life form, right? Doesn't it take two for pretty much everything? Yeah, like two parents. I think there's some. It's like super rare that, but yeah, I think it's like uh, two different chromosomes or whatever. It would two be. whatevers. Yeah, co mingle and then bam, yeah. re reproduction. So yeah, that's definitely in our DNA and our nature <laughs> to reproduce. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Even at the like core level of like what makes up our our like DNA and stuff, like mm -hmm. that's what's gonna happen there. Yeah, we're kind of built on that. And it makes sense to us on the so outer it makes level sense too. So we would want to recreate that when we're growing up as a kid. You're like, yeah, I'm sure. Like our our our, like our daughter is like thinking about like she sees us doing this and like her cousins like they they see their parents doing this and like yeah, one day I'm gonna be because they see we they see our parents so like their grandparents. You know what I'm saying? Like Victoria's mom, they're able to see and make really like now they're old enough to comprehend that like, oh, this is like a like the way that she's my mom. Like that's her mom and like this relationship is like they're able to understand that this is like a, like a transferred relationship and like my relationship with her mom is like she's my grandma so it's kind of different but like she's her mom and like she's my mom but like i'm gonna be a mom to somebody one of these days eventually with or whatever and like that's probably like yeah that reproduction is definitely kind of in your thought when you're a kid growing up like, oh, I'm, i'll be a part of that cycle eventually but for now i'm a kid eventually i'll be a part of that cycle or i guess i'm already in that cycle but eventually i'll be if you want to, if you want to have kids. So, that's in there. Even in if, there. Even if we're not talking <laughs> about there. that, that's in there. It's in there. And I think that's why we, uh, I think part of the problem is. But we don't know that many, many happy couples. Sorry. You, no, to a T. We don't know mm. that many happy couples, so we're struggling to deal with that. Yes. And we don't, there's no guidebook for that. Mm -hmm. And society seems to be making it kind of, I don't know if it's true or not but stereotypically society has been like pushing more of like a single independent narrative for like people to shy away from like the family unit and just be more like focused on work and focused on the career focused on um not like building up the family structure in america and like pushing uh that agenda forward and i'm not exactly sure what that looks like but culturally definitely with like our movies and our music and stuff like that it feels like um there's been like some like lowering of the standard of like it's okay to kind of like just be drake-esque and like being in the strip club throwing the most money on as some the slime shit yeah as the ideal versus mm -hmm. and like with some side chicks yeah exactly and i think that um that coming to the forefront of like culture is not helping with like us not knowing very many happy couples and i'm not saying that like people just like get super engrossed in culture and then they're going to act like that but there is some if that's what we're like soaking up in 
our TV shows are about all this drama stuff and mm-hmm. um, everything we're seeing on Instagram and Twitter, like the couples are falling apart and like there's not just like a lot of, it just seems like it's getting kind of lost in the wind. And I think Jordan Peterson's talked about that um, and Joe Rogan too is part of where I got that from. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's car- maybe part of Drake's success is that like he is a reflection of this like kind of lost, not sure how to deal with it, but I don't want to feel overly vulnerable about it. And I'm doing my best to be like, what What do women want? I don't know. <laughs> Some people say women want you to like not, I don't know. What is, what's Drake doing? He's like uh, not disrespecting women to a degree, but he's not like simping for them either. He's like mm-hmm. kind of like treating them like he doesn't need them. And some people would say that's what women women want a man that doesn't need them. It's like an attractive trait. Mm. And I guess what I'm saying is like it's such a complex thing that we're dealing Very with. Yeah. And then at, well, for whatever reason, Drake has found success. He's got the most since since Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And He's right there. In this era and age, for whatever reason, that that's resonating. Like it is, mm-hmm. which is weird because not necessarily to me, but like. Yeah, he has range too. That's another thing. He has multiple songs or a wide variety of songs that elicit a wide variety of emotions. True. But just on this particular album, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that <laughs> sad boy shit, dog. <laughs> Why, damn it? Certified sad boy. Yeah. It, it's, but I think, yeah, part of what he's, he's just uh, always offering his perspective within, like, in regards to partnership and finding a woman and his struggle and pursuit in that. He's always offering that perspective. But, yeah, I guess maybe you were kind of talking about maybe he's like embodying and representing the the tr- the truth behind how how hard it is, or like the the struggle with like the the struggle that we all have with that, just on on a mass scale. Because yeah, we we don't know that many happy couples, and it's like the the divorce rate's super high, and that's what the people who actually get divorced, as Joe Rogan has talked about, he's like, how many cowards stay? <laughs> <laughs> so god knows man yeah, it's, it's a hard thing to figure out we're all struggling with that on a societal level so yes. maybe yeah maybe that's why it resonates so much something or at least speaking to it it's being like he just reminds me of someone who is like doesn't want to seem vulnerable so he's a little overly hard and like there's a truth in there. Like, we we fuck with that for whatever reason. We're like, okay, he can tell me about it. He gets it. Like, he's in that place where, like, it sucks, but I'm not going to be a bitch about it. It's like, that's kind of where we're, where we're all sitting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. It's hard. Damn near impossible. Trying, you're, you're in a happy relationship. Yeah. A role model, it's, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's tight. It's insane. So, like, it happens. It's out there. Mm-hmm. It's dope. Yeah, it's out there. It's worth pursuing for sure. For sure. So yeah, I guess with that being said, is Drake in that same vein of like it's worth pursuing? So I'm like, I'm willing to pursue that fully? Or is he like kind of nihilistic about it and I'm gonna throw money in the strip club? <laughs> so I'm not Sounds sure like how, where he where is he on the on that spectrum? We don't know him, you know. Mm-hmm. I also don't it's he, all speculative. Like he said he's the petty king. Mm-hmm. Like he said that. Self proclaimed petty king. Yeah, like on Melt- Meltdown was allegedly a threat that he was going to melt down some Tupac jewelry that Kendrick cared about. I, I was like, if this way hip hop beef has come to, like, this is tough. It's a tough look for everybody involved. But what I'm trying to say is, would anybody want to be with a partner who is like the self proclaimed petty king? <laughs> like, who? Who wants to be the petty queen? <laughs> <laughs> Got an asshole ish, huh? I guess a little I, bit. I guess I understand it to a degree because, like, I almost understand elitism to a degree, just because we live in America, which is a capitalist society, which means I appreciate competence. Like, incompetence is something you cultivate and develop. Like, everybody can work hard, like, give effort and practice. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when people, I, I almost do want to be like, bro, like, I'm not fucking with these people that are not putting a lot of effort into their competence levels. Um, and I guess if that's your idea of a petty king and a petty queen, like I almost understand that, but it's just the wrong way to be. It's yeah, just wrong way to be. You don't want. Yeah, no. Come on now. You know that just like objectively, or like you wouldn't want your son to be that. I don't think. So yeah, I don't know if he'll be able to settle down with with somebody. Maybe maybe we'll see in the next decade if Drake's able to settle down with somebody. One thing, too, you got to think about, or I just thought about, is, like, 
everybody's trying to be their best self, right? I think that's kind of what like the test of life is, is if you can become like the the best version of yourself, like mm-hmm. try to maximize. Yeah. And I think part of that is like being a good person and like being willing to be like honest and vulnerable to the human experience, which is like um kind of scary. Like to be just in the wind and in moments and like going through transformation and like uh the shifts of the natural natures of life and it's kind of like uh i think sometimes like that's what life is about it's like getting to those moments and like really feeling like i don't know do you ever just like get to a big moment where you just feel like this is what life is right here like i feel like wonder and awe and like anxiety and like all of the emotions of I'm trying to think of like let's say um I feel that like in maybe in I think that that feeling can be felt across different like emotional spectrums like I felt that kind of like yesterday and like just having a day off and like taking the kids out and enjoying some great weather with the dog yeah it's like this is what life is about yeah and then also you can feel that like I don't know whenever you're in the, in the middle of a work shift and you're like fulfilling your obligations and you can see like the results of your hard work and people are happy and things are going well. You're like, this is what life's about right here. Let's go. I had a moment like that at work like maybe three weeks ago where Mm -hmm. I felt exactly that. And I just started clapping off. I was like, I love this shit. (laughs) I love this shit, bro. I'm built for this. Yeah, dude. It felt so good. Like Mm. uh, other words could have been like, this is what life's about. Right. You know? Yeah. I think that there's multiple spectrums of emotion that may, may fit into that. I felt that same thing when we had our birthday dinner at J Prom in austin mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um man i was like crying i was like this is what life's about like yeah that that feeling right there i also felt it at my graduation so i think you kind of get the hint of like what we're talking about mm-hmm. um like i think that your partner lies in that thing like your partner is not in like how much money you make or how much money you're willing to throw at stuff mm-hmm. like to buy stuff or whether or not you're cooler than other people or you're the best at anything like I think that the your partner lies in the the scariness that is like we we don't really know what's going on like um I don't know why that that I remember saying when I was crying eating that birthday dinner is that like this could have gone a hundred ways this could have gone a million ways but we're right here in this moment and we're like having this dinner and we're like working where we're working and we're experiencing this thing right here with each other mm-hmm. and that kind of has me tripping right now we're all good yeah and we're gonna keep going forward. Mm-hmm. and i think that's like what i felt at graduation too or like and i just think it's the same thing when you meet someone it's like i came all the way to this place and then like this when you meet someone and it like clicks i heard david beckham talking about it too in the documentary like he's like i met her and i just like knew i was like oh, okay like i'm gonna like date this girl it's gonna be like the real thing you know mm-hmm. and then you give like that little bit more effort or you're willing to be a little bit more vulnerable or like to look foolish or to like compromise more and, like, I think I, those things, that's what I question if Drake's doing. Like, life, like, those big satisfying moments call for those things. But, like, someone who's, like, too cool for school might not be willing to, like, do those things. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, like, Tyler, Tyler, the creator, said, like, you you can't be so cool that you freeze. And I think he might just be, like, frozen right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, In regards to, like, how to act, like, in relation to... To like partnership li- yeah or to life itself so that life yeah. would resent him in the place where he's gonna have that like click of a moment with somebody and he's gonna like do everything that would make that thing work not self-sabotage or whatever yeah push it away or fuck it up just like on a drunk night or whatever mm-hmm. you know yeah whatever motifs he's been rapping about <laughs> yeah exactly right like w- would you i don't think i would want god to send me someone that i would just like archetypically fuck it up with as i've spit on 10 albums like i'm just gonna do the i'm gonna do the take care again with this one and it's like no this one's perfect for you Mm -hmm. it's like we'll find out yeah i don't know yeah we will find out we will find find out out. but i like getting in there with the the meta nature of partnership and life and yeah what's going on with drake (laughs) why can't you do you know you, you seem to be winning in so many other facets I think, I don't know. I'm not sure if you got a dub in that category. He spent a lot of time. So he spent time with somebody before Scorpion because he raps about it like on Jaded and Peak and there's a lot of hurt feelings in Scorpion. Mm -hmm. And then he also talks about uh, having a baby, I guess, with that person. 
I think it's the same person because March 14th. Uh huh. He talks about in song. Yeah, sealed and signed. Yeah. So. I think some of it is maybe he was trying with her, but it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what to say about that. You know, it might not even been his fault. Yeah, we we don't know. We don't know very. <laughs> we don't know very many of the details about Drake's life. But Drake, I'm rooting for you, Drake. If you ever see this, I'm rooting for you, dog. Dude, I'm, hit, sure, I'm sure your soulmate's out there somewhere waiting on you. Hit us up, bro. <laughs> Talk to us about it. I love the interview. I believe it. I believe it. Yes, my dog. Let's see, was there a, was there anything want to want to round out for the beautiful people at home, dude? On light, the road, uh, lightning round. Landing round. Something to look forward to. What's going on? Sports talk. Damian Lillard went to the Bucks. Bucks. Enjoy that. Milwaukee. Crazy. Portland, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tough look for Portland. <sighs> Some people think it's a matter of time. Or not a matter of time. It's a it was only a matter of time. Yeah. It's like finally he got traded. It's crazy to think about. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if he was ever going to leave. I was like, I know he doesn't really want to deep down in his heart. The true nature of his competitive self <laughs> wants to stay with that team. But he wants a dub. He wants a dub, man. They're, they're trying to rebuild. <laughs> yeah. It's a, good for him. Good for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Business move. I'm happy that he got to a place where he can try to win a championship because ultimately yeah. maybe, soul... maybe that's even more sticking true to the competitive nature of his soul is to try to compete at, at the highest level he can yeah i think that's what probably where he came to with it yeah yeah you'd be a hometown icon or you'd be a champion yeah that's what we came for and y'all heard it here first y'all heard it here first the the prophetic bucks lakers it's gonna be seven game series <laughs> oh put the money on it don't put some money on that future right now you're welcome that's hard Okay, bet. Um, Jimmy Butler's back to Jimmy Butler form. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> he was, he went through a. Oh my god, his hair. He went through a phase on Instagram. Oh my gosh, I'm sure I'm sure people saw it. If you have any sort of following on social or uh, Sports Center or NBA on any social medias, I'm sure you saw that. Yeah, Jimmy Butler's new do. It was crazy. Yeah, he's back to normal though. <laughs> that was alarming. It was alarming for. He just likes making waves, I guess. I don't know. We're not sure. I think it might have been. I wish I could talk to him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy wants us to. Please, Jimmy, if you want to do an interview, please hit us up. Let us know. Um, so that's cool. I saw those things. Other than that, man, just cruising through life, kind of keeping my head down. Nothing going crazy. Um, David Beckham documentary is great. Uh, nice. Gladiators on Netflix. Grand. Yes. Yeah, I need to show that to my girlfriend. She hasn't seen that before. Great movie. Banger. Banger. Banger of a movie. I'll watch that tonight or tomorrow. Let's go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, um, man. Yeah, man. Just, I, I've been seeing the wings of my life, man. Um, it, I see it. and The 214s? Yeah. Uh, 214. So, yeah. Like, Justin was talking about 38. It's a number for him that represents, like, a certain kind of energy of, like, the universe talking to him. Mm. And so... Um, 214 is, was my mom's favorite number. Uh, not even... Not my favorite number, but, like, it... it uh, I don't even know why exactly it was, mm-hmm. but she would see it everywhere. And it was like a wink that would talk to her. So sometimes when I see that number, like repetitively, I feel like my mom is like there with me maybe, or talking, not talking to me, but maybe trying to affirm something inside yeah, of me. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. You got to kind of, I'm right here. You got to feel it in the moment, you know, in the right place at the right time. Um, And then I had a day where like, I pulled up to my first day at a new job and I like put the car in park, ready to go inside. I'm like, all right, here we go. Pop my neck, look, 214 on the dot. And I was just like, Oof. I don't know. Just felt like uh, my mom kind of like patting me on the head and being like, this is tight. Let's go. Let's go. And then later Let's in that go. day, it turned out that like uh, Justin needed some cash. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I was like, no one had cash. And I was like, how much do we need? And it was exactly how much cash I had in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And I had the cash in my pocket for the most random reason. Because of some other altruistic good shit that I didn't want to do that I did for a homie. Netted me that money. Put me in a position where I ended up wildly next to you that day because we didn't think I was going to start that day. Nope, not supposed to. Nope. And then I like was like, no, nah, let's go. More for us, more for us. Let's start today. Start a day early, not a day late. And then show up, get patted on the head by my mom. And I'm there just in time to have exactly how much money Justin needed. And I was like, that's life. That's life. That's what life's about. That's what life's about. <laughs> that's what life's about. <laughs> in that moment, I was like, this is it. Yes. Have me tripping. Yes, though. Yes, look, looking for that. So, yeah. Keep um, going. Most optimal timeline, y'all. Most look, optimal timeline. Yeah, just stay tapped in. I feel like you, you can look for f- it. feel it when it happens. Feel too. it. Look for it. 
be grateful for it, be happy, be excited about it. Yeah, it's almost like a chart or a map to keep you get going. Get charged by it. Right yeah. direction. Keep going. Yeah, it's right. like you're on a marathon and it's just like you see like a an arrow. And you're like, oh, yes, keep going this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great, dude. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, find like reaffirmation in that. Mm -hmm. You feel good about validation yeah. in that. Yes, absolutely. Very important, yeah. Keep looking for those wings, y'all. Keep looking for those signs. Never stop. We're going to be some of your rocket boosters. We got you. A little shot of espresso. Keep going. We're rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. Let's Wherever go. Wherever you're going. Whatever you're going through. Whatever you're doing. Keep going. We got you. We'll see you on the other side. If you're going to quit, don't quit today. Yeah, one more day. Maybe wait one more day. Just wait one more day. And then re revisit this step tomorrow. Yeah. Just don't quit for one more day. Hell yeah. I love you guys. That's it. Love y'all. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might.